This time, I take an even closer look at the components of Ichimoku that are designed to provide the entry and exit signals for a trading strategy. Specifically, I look at the calculations behind them because if we understand these, then we can use the indicator in a more informed way. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Today I look at the calculations behind the Tenkan Sen and the Kijun Sen lines of the Ichimoku indicator. Understanding the rationale behind these is one of the keys to being able to use Ichimoku successfully. Let's take a look. Ichimoku is just one of the indicators that I'll be looking at as part of the Spotlight on Indicators video series. And last time I covered these two middle lines, the Tenkan Sen and the Kijun Sen, and looked at how these are used to help inform the entry and exit signals for a trading strategy. So if you missed that, then you might find it useful to also watch the previous episode. So expanding this chart a little, this is what Ichimoku looks like. And we have the Tenkan Sen in yellow here and the Kijun Sen in blue. And the calculation that sits behind these is very similar. For the Tenkan Sen, it's calculated as the average of the highest high and the lowest low over the previous nine bars. For Kijun Sen, it's identical other than the fact that the previous 26 bars are used. So just to get some extra clarity over this, let's zoom into a particular area of price action. And I'm just going to choose a point on the Tenkan Sen line that you can see highlighted here. Remember, this is calculated over the previous nine bars. So between the red dot here and the white vertical line. And remember, we're after the highest high which in this case just happens to be on the most current bar used to calculate this particular point. And the lowest low is on the ninth bar, as you can see here. But of course, it won't always be the case that it's the most recent bar and the ninth. But in this case, it is. And so we can draw a horizontal price line across here from these two points. And remember, the calculation requires the average of these, which will be right in the middle. And as you can see, that's exactly where this point on the Tenkan Sen has been drawn. So let's now move on to the Kijun Sen. This value is slightly lower than that of the yellow line. And remember now we're looking at 26 bars worth of data. And so that takes us to this point here. But the principle of the highest high and the lowest low is the same. So again, we're going to take this point as our highest high, but the lowest low actually appears on this bar, which is bar 10. And again, we need to take each of these price levels, calculate the average, and that gives us our point. So with that in mind, now let's start to consider what the rationale is behind these calculations. Because the Tenkan Sen line is based on very recent price action compared to the Kijun Sen, this means that it reacts to changes in the price much quicker than the Kijun Sen does. And you can see that visually in the chart because the yellow Tenkan Sen line mimics the price much more closely than the blue Kijun Sen line. And as price begins to move with real purpose, the Tenkan Sen line attempts to chase that price action. 
whereas the Kijun Sen is much slower to react. And it's for this reason that a crossover of these two lines indicates a change in direction of the underlying momentum. And of course, in any trend following system, that's exactly what we're trying to identify. We're trying to pinpoint when a new trend is beginning in order to jump into a trade in that direction and pinpoint when the momentum then turns in the opposite direction, which is the signal that we need to get out of that trade. And the point at which the underlying momentum changes direction provides those ideal opportunities. But as I said in the previous episode, we cannot rely on these signals on their own. If we do, then when the market is in a trading range or a sideways price action mode, the strategy would be continually whipsawed and profit would suffer dramatically as a result. And that is where the other two aspects of the Ichimoku indicator come into play. And they are designed to allow the trading strategy to trade when conditions are favourable and to disallow trading when they're not. And that's what we're going to be moving on to in the next episodes. More details on that in a moment. But for now, just one more reminder that please do request an indicator if you believe there's good reason to consider it worthy of investigation. And I'll be considering all of the requests that are put forward and I'll be making a decision about which of those I consider might present the best opportunities in terms of identifying trading edges. Okay, so in the next episode, episode four, I'm going to move on to one of these other lines in the Ichimoku indicator called the Chiku Span. And this measures market sentiment by looking at the trend, direction, and the underlying momentum. And then just like we did with Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen, I'll then move on to look at the calculation and the rationale behind it. Now, if you'd like to find out more about DarwinX and the kind of services that we offer, then take a look at the description on the video and there are a few links in there that will direct you to get more information on that. But now, until next time, trade safe.